So today we are going to talk about project organization. Uh, we have already covered introduction, then project planning, then uh, theoretical aspects of project selection. And today we will try to cover at least a portion of project organization. And since you have studied so many other courses related to management, even in one specific course related to management, where you have observed that uh, there are uh, many functions of management among that, the first function is planning. So in case of project management, we have a started planning. Uh, we cover planning. And there is another management function immediately after planning is organization so when there is a management immediately after planning you need to go for organization or you are working for organizing various tasks so when we talk about organization it means not that you require an office or you require some furniture when we talk about organization it means that you have to organize the goals and objectives that you want to achieve through a formal process or establish a commitment so if you want to start a small shop and that is your project then organization means to fix the exact goals and objectives, exact vision and mission. And when you are determined alone or along with two, three partners, <coughs> and you are committed to reach to the destination, then that is an organization. But sometimes we need formal organization where we need office, we need human resource management, we need finance and others. So we are going to start today project organization. And why uh, project oriented organizations are growing day by day? Uh, in our prior discussion, especially uh, in our introductory discussion, we have mentioned that each and every task uh, which uh, are motivated to reach to a specific destination and hold some specific features related to the project. And those all are projects now. So renovation of your classroom is a project. I mentioned several times, if you fulfill some features characteristics of the project so that case is most of the companies now it is they are transforming themselves as project oriented organization so what are the reasons behind this why project oriented organizations are growing uh, if you see the initiatives of the government so you will find that there are some parent companies of the government like a railway. But again, within the railways, there are many projects. So a railway is a sponsoring project oriented organizations. And same in other ministry as well. And if you think about some banks, you will find that they have hospitals. So they have different projects within the bank environment. They're sponsoring so many different projects. So that's why it is essential to know that why project-oriented organizations are growing. Obviously, these are the not the uh, final uh, reasons. Uh, you can have more reasons uh, if you storm your brain or the study you have already covered uh, within so many courses, you are matured enough that you can also include some reasons. So these are some specific reasons uh, from Meredith, uh, but obviously these are not the final. You are a matured student. 
you can add or you can subtract even you can add from other text and if you study uh, different articles you can also find out different reasons from all those so i'm just uh, following our text and that case is the first reason we have is is speed and market responsiveness have become absolute requirements for successful competition a little complex but uh if you study uh, other courses where you will find the word called agility means the work environment is continuously changing <coughs> excuse me every minutes uh, is changing even a margin the world's largest supply chain logistics organization and they claim that they observe market every hour every hour you see that it's not every week every month they observe the market scenario every hour and take action immediately they observe any sort of change and that's where they are market leader so this is called agility and it's again we are using here you see the responsiveness so is speed and market responsiveness have become absolute that is once you observe any sort of change you need to recognize that and immediately you have to respond with the change uh, for successful competition and it's not possible if you consider the whole organization and then take time to cope with the situation so when the organization is project based you have project a project b project c you have project manager you have separate project experts and project members then it is automatically be possible to take the agile strategy means the responsiveness will be speedy quick and the right responsiveness you can establish the second one is project is not only related to the organization what i mentioned as examples so many national and multinational companies who are continuously uh, engaging themselves uh, to develop new products new production processes or service processes and they uh, need to monitor regularly uh, their inputs uh, whether uh, there are some alternative inputs the economic inputs the quality is same but you can procure from different sources with minimum cost uh, so since uh, the development is increasing of new products processes and services so obviously uh, requires input from diverse areas of specialized knowledge so when the organization transforms themselves into project oriented organizations the scope of utilizing those human resources who have expertise on different discipline different knowledge field uh, can uh, access so there is another reasons behind that so you can capitalize the expertise of uh, different human resources various human resources resources from uh, different uh, knowledge field technology is a fact nowadays so technology is continuously uh, becoming obsolete uh, three four years back production process is now obsolete every year there is a new uh, mobile phone it's because the old model is becoming obsolete uh, the uh, new uh, vehicles we are watching every year uh, most of the companies start uh, nishan and others they have new brand every year so why every year why not it's four to five years later we will have another brand it's because technology is uh, obsoleting every day every year every month and if you can cope with the technology if your production process become old obviously you will be out of the competition 
So another reason is a rapid expansion of technological possibilities in almost every area of enterprise tends to destabilize the structure of organizations. So what's the solutions? The solution is cope with the new technology and then you need a group of people who are really experts in the relevant field of technology. And why project-oriented organization? When project-oriented organization focuses on a specific task, they have some time period. So if you take a project for five years, so five years, the project people are focusing on only the project, only the task of the projects, only the vision of the projects, goals and objectives of the projects. So this helps us uh, to ensure the quality uh, within the budget or within the time limit. And then a majority of senior managers really feel much confidence in their understanding and control of the activities of their areas. So again, if you consider organization as a whole, then really the situation will be like this. Our senior managers rarely feel much confidence in their understanding and control of the activities in their areas. So really, it will be difficult for them uh, to cover, uh, use employees, use functions. And that case is if the organization is focusing on project or the organization is project-oriented uh, project -oriented organization, then it will be easier it will be uh, easier for the management uh, to control the organization and capitalize the expertise of resources, human resources. Why? Because specific people will be responsible for specific tasks. And types of project organization. There are so many types of project organization. Uh, we have functional project organization, we have divisional project organization, we have a matrix uh, project organization, we have hybrid types of project organization. So there are many types of project organization. We'll cover uh, some of this. The first one is functional project organization. When you start a project, uh, uh, you can start a project with two, three people. Uh, it's possible if the project is uh, within a very uh, limited uh, budget, uh, time is short, and the mission and vision is not that much complex. And that case is uh, you can run a project with two, three team members. Sometimes our teachers, they run project uh, with, uh, with two, three team members or with four, five students. Uh, that is possible. But when we are talking about a uh, different project, formal project, uh, organization-based project, that case is one is functional organization. So functional organization means, suppose there is a project conveyed and then functional organization is just like the management where you have started that in a project, if they have production line, they have supply chain, they have IT, they have accounts and finance, uh, they have MIS, and this way, if they have so many different functions, then considering all these functions and to capitalize the expertise of uh, different human resources, various human resources, uh, then the organization can go for functional organization. Why it is called functional organization? You see that the organization is functions based. There are many functions and each functions can be a department or can be a unit. What are the advantages of functional organization? If you look at here in this picture and then if you check the advantages, you will find relationship. Where's the advantages? The first one is maximum flexibility in the use of a stuff. 
So those have expertise on production. So you don't need to use them uh, in IT or in accounts and finance. So you can put them, you can allow them or you can hire them to run production. And those have IT background, you can hire them for IT functions. So maximum flexibility in the use of a staff and in terms of their knowledge, skills, and abilities. In terms of their knowledge, skills, and abilities. And since the related people are working in the related department or covering the related functions, so individual experts can be utilized by many different projects if this person why is really an expert in the field of production so this is project tanvir and if there is a project hider then if these project also have a production department then mr y can simultaneously support project tanvir and project hider as well so this is individual experts can be utilized by many different projects. A specialist in the division can be grouped to share knowledge and experiences. So when there are two, three experts are working uh, together, and obviously this is a simple advantage that uh, they can share their knowledge and expertise. This division also serves as a base of technological continuity when individuals choose to leave the project. So once you work with a project for three years and then when you leave the project, you are already an expert and you can serve as a base of technological continuity. Technological continuity when you choose to leave the project. And we see that people who are working with a project for two to three years and they never go for permanent jobs. And most of the cases, the expertise they have developed through two, three years experience. And there are millions of opportunities for them uh, to join again in a new projects. In a new projects, even within the organization. So they are leaving the project but they're not leaving the organization. So they're just moving from project one because project is done, project is successfully completed. So they move to another project of the organization. Uh, since they have uh, a two, three years experience, so they have more money. Uh, sometimes even they can move to a different organization. So functional division contains the normal path of advancement for individuals whose expertise is in the functional area. So if you join uh, in the accounts and finance as a junior executives, so with the passage of time and expertise, with new knowledge and skills, you will be officer one day, you will be manager one day, you will be CFO one day. So there is a normal path of advancement for individuals who expertise whose expertise is in the functional area. And that's why uh, if the organization follow functional organization structure, then the people uh, will be valued in terms of their knowledge and skills. Otherwise, if you pass from finance and then you have to join sales department, uh, you are passing from management and you have to do accounting job. Uh, what is happening in different organization in our country they don't know exactly what is structure they are following there are many uh, renowned companies that have no management structure there are also disadvantages uh, just remember the structure very simple functional structure so what are the disadvantages the client is not the focus of activity and concern Remember, the disadvantages is not final. It's maybe, maybe 
So why we use maybe? And if it's maybe, it's not the final disadvantage. So why we study disadvantages? We are becoming aware about disadvantages. It means not that these, these disadvantages remain. No, we are trying to find out disadvantages in advance so that the, these kind of disadvantages will not be entertained in the organization. The second one is the functional division tends to be oriented toward the activities particular to its function. The problem is when we have five functions, sometimes the intuition or intuitive nature of the employees will not work. Suppose you are working with the production department, but there is a shortage of the uh, human resources in another department and they are seeking your cooperation. You are not expert, but you can cooperate them. At least you can inspire them. You can be the part of their team members uh, for few hours or a uh, few days. And these kind of activities are seriously discouraged. Uh, people that don't want to leave their own department, own function areas. And sometimes uh, these will uh, really create some problems within the organization. Uh, intuitive nature, you know that you are uh, a person of the Department of Finance, but if you see that there is a problem with the salespeople, then you can train them, you can talk them, you can work with them. Sometimes you can visit the field to find out the problems of the sales. Uh, you can, but if you don't want to do this, it means you are just focusing on finance all the time. So sometimes so it may have, it may, it may uh, create problems. And sometimes in these types of organization, no individual is given full responsibility for the project. So why? Because the project is related to five or six functions. And instead of appointing an independent project manager, the parent organization is controlling all these functions. Uh, so this kind of problem arises and if it happens, then decision making will be tough, time consuming, and obviously uh, out of the competition. So sometimes the project will not uh, complete their uh, task within the time limit and budget. And different scenario may happen is that the several layers of management between the project and the client. So that is bureaucracy. If bureaucracy increases or red tapeism uh, because of the functional areas, if red tapeism exists, then uh, it will be like our country's project where most of the time uh, we cross the limit of budget and time and even sometimes it's 10 to 20 times higher than the original budget there is a tendency to sub optimize the project again what i mentioned that it is it is uh, it, it may be so it's not that final we are uh, identifying all these disadvantages not that these disadvantages exist it may happen sometimes happened earlier so from the previous experiences the researcher the author uh, the author of this text uh, authors of the of the text they have identified this kind of problem so you may not experience similar kind of disadvantages one is called pure project organization so when we are talking about functional organization so functional here the parent organization they have separated some projects based on their functions so is still the control remain with the parent organization so functional organizations are not pure project organization because they need to depend all the time on their parent 
organization's decisions. So pure project organization have different identity, separate identity. Uh, they are much more sovereign in nature, except some very top level strategic matters. Most of the cases they are independent. Most of the cases uh, they can take their own decision. They can form their activities. Uh, they can design the uh, deadline within the budget frame, or they can fix the budget uh, under the terms and conditions of the parent organization. So when you practice a pure project organization, obviously pure project organization uh, have some advantages. What it is, the first one, just think this side when I have drawn so many things and I mentioned the project manager has full line authority over the project. The project manager. So what I mentioned, it's much more sovereign type of project. So the project manager has full line authority over the project. And then members of the project workforce are directly responsible to the project manager. So this is a really the beauty of the project organization. All the employees feel comfort to utilize their expertise because they know exactly their boss, their manager. So they are reporting to the project manager only. And when the project is done, is removed from the functional division, the lines of communications are shortened. Guru Krishi can be uh, eliminated. Uh, when this is a pure project organization, you don't need to talk with the finance department of the parent organization. Uh, you work here, your boss is the project manager. If something really spe uh, a special, urgent, contingent, that case is the project manager will responsible for this and he or she will communicate with the parent organization to resolve the issues. And if there are many successive projects of similar kind, the pure project organization can maintain a permanent cadre of experts who have who develop skills in a specific technologies. So project A, project B, project C, if these projects are really similar types of, types of projects, and in these projects, uh, Tanvir can work as a talent manager. So Tanvir is the talent manager of the organization. So uh, this talent manager can uh, support here. So these way Tanvir, these way P, these way Q, these way R, these way M and O. So so many uh, cadre of experts uh, can be appointed permanently uh, uh, when the pure project organization uh, uh, will be practiced. So these people are known as cadre of experts. And moreover, since it's a sovereign types of project and a project team that has a strong and separate identity and develops a high level of commitment from its members. Simple. The team can show their dedication. Uh, they can uh, work independently. Uh, they can uh, take decision. Uh, they are much more independent. So they can develop high level of commitment uh, is a project team. And because the authority is centralized, the ability to make swift decision is enhanced because project manager is there and the team members are here. And unity of command exists. The older members, they work together and they follow the same path. And these kind of organizations are structurally simple and flexible like functional organization here and which makes them relatively easy to understand and implement. The organizational structure tends to support a holistic approach to the project. And when we talk about holistic approach, then project manager is not an autocratic one. Shop ne ja dekhe tai implement karana. Since there is a team of the project, so project manager and team members, they sit together, 
they discuss together and they finalize the best alternative. And obviously, there are some disadvantages. Again, what I mentioned, disadvantages we cover, it means not that always these disadvantages will remain. But it's for a caution, it's for precaution. One disadvantage, each project tends to be fully stopped, which can lead to a duplication of effort in every area from clerical staff to technological support. You say that I don't believe that it will happen nowadays because the organizations are much more concerned about their finance, about their budget. So it will happen if there is a mistake. Uh, if the human resource management department is not that much specialized on recruiting and selection. So you see that there is a solution of this problem. Why you will go for recruiting uh, excess team members on same field and then now it is uh, it may happen but nowadays uh, it will not happen the organizations are becoming much more uh, conjush myself there is a need to ensure access to technological knowledge and skills that results in an attempt by project manager to stock file equipment and technical assistance yes it may happen but there is also a solution now training has become so simple and easy so all the time you can organize training program with the right people or you can send your staff to the right organization to have the right training uh, the functional division is a repository of technical law but it is not readily accessible to team members of the pure project team uh, is a uh, similar to number two so uh, very much related with this uh, I'm not going to explain again. Pure project groups seem to foster inconsistency in the way in which policies and procedures are carried out. Sometimes it may happen uh, because if you have expertise on a specific field in the finance and organization is uh, pushing you to do something different, so there will have a conflict. So project groups seem to foster inconsistency in the way in which policies and procedures are carried out because you have the expertise and in a pure organization the project takes on a life of its own so why this is disadvantage uh, it, it is advantage as well as disadvantage uh, it is advantage you can uh, finish your task on time you can show your commitment uh, dedication and devotion and it is disadvantage if you are not like this if you're not committed that much if you are not showing dedication devotion you are independent type person the whole team is uh exercising full independence uh these kind of problem may arise the project takes on a life of its own so, so this kind of problem may arise if the team members and project managers uh, they're not uh, showing their dedication or commitment there tends to be concern among team members about life after the project ends since uh it's a pure project organization so it, it, it may create a problem for the uh, members uh about life after project ends because uh, in a functional type organization we have observed that the people who are working with one specific functions they can move to the other parts of the organization for doing same functions but it's a independent nature project project has a specific time and these people are only recruited for the project so when the project is uh, the life of the project uh, is uh, completed the project is uh, in, in in its end then what will happen to the team members? Yes, this is a disadvantage. Then what is a matrix organization? Uh, in case of matrix organization, what we have learned is the simple way to learn is reporting. What? This is the organization. So here is a, a finance manager. And again, here is a project manager. 
So Mr. X, who is a, a finance officer, uh, he needs to report to the project manager A because he is dealing with the financial activities of project A and same time he's a staff of the organization and his boss is the finance director. Now you see that he is reporting to the finance director and same time is reporting to the project manager A. And that's why this is called matrix organization. But remember, the project or strong matrix organization most resembles the pure project organization. And when the matrix organizations are weak, uh, then this resembles the functional form. And we are talking about balance matrix. Uh, that is what is in between the functional and pure project organization. What are the advantages? The project is the point of emphasis. Okay. So we see that project is the point of em emphasis or not. This is the project A, this is the project B, this is the project C. There is a X finance officer, Y and Z, and there is a finance director. So without taking these projects, this finance director can use the expertise of X, Y, Z without forming separate project, project A, project B, and project C, uh, this finance director can use the expertise of X and Y Z uh, for functioning uh, those tasks, those tasks. I didn't mention project A, project B, project C. So when there is a project A, project B, and project C, and here's a finance director, so these people are working with project A, project B, and project C, though they are the employee of the a uh, parent organization under finance director. So it means the project is the point of em emphasis. Yeah, it's all right. Then because the project is overlaid on the functional divisions, the project has reasonable access to the reservoir of technology in all areas. Yes. So if they have access to the finance, then if there is an IT director, and under IT director, the people are PQR. So the project can have access to the uh, technological uh, uh, talent pool. We say reservoir of technology in all areas. There is less anxiety about what happens when the project is completed. Yeah. And response to clients' needs is as rapid as in the peer project organization. Yes, because it says that when we are uh, talking about matrix organization uh, that is a combination that is a combination matrix means combination of functional organization and pure project organization as that case is obviously response to clients needs is as rapid as the pure project organization and it gives the project access to representatives from the administrative units of the parent firm the picture we have drawn, uh, that is enough to understand this. The matrix organization allows a better company-wide balance of resources to achieve goals. Again, look at the structure. And there is a great deal of flexibility in precisely how the project is organized within the matrix. Uh, what kind of flexibility? I can explain in a different way. I don't know exactly whether mental uh, mental means it or not. The flexibility is since it's a it's a is an organization where uh, X Y and Z they are working for A B and C projects uh, separately though they all are finance expert. Suppose Z uh, is not working at this moment for some specific reasons, or Z moves to uh, a different place, or uh, he's sick now at this moment. So X and Y. They have expertise on finance and they are also working with projects. So they have expertise, uh, especially on uh, project financing. So uh, project C can capitalize the expertise of X and Y uh, when they need. 
So there is a great deal of flexibility in precisely how the project is organized within the matrix. So you can organize, you can reorganize within the matrix. So there are some disadvantages as well. Again, look at the structure. So if you look at the structure, what I have drawn earlier, the balance of power between the project and the functional areas is very delicate. If it is like that, so you have two boss, the team has to report to the two uh, different uh, identity. One is a project head, another one is a functional head. You see that finance director is a functional head and project A manager is the project head. So what will happen? The matrix management gives the project access to representatives from the administrative sir, where, where it is. The balance of power between the project and the functional areas is very delicate. Then the movement of resources from project to project may foster political infighting. In Bangladesh, we observe that. Uh, they don't want to move to those projects where facilities are limited. Not salary, salary. Problems associated with shutting down projects can be as serve as in a pure project organization. The division of authority and responsibility. We know that where is authority, there is a responsibility. In a matrix organization, is complex. It's complex and uncomfortable for the project manager. Yes, that is a disadvantage. And matrix management violates the management principles of unity of command. No way of unity of common because project workers have at least two bosses. At least they may have three bosses as well. So they're functional heads and project manager. And besides these, uh, they may have to report to even third party. So when we combine, we will have mixed kind of organizational system. So we can uh, mix up uh, a pure project structure and functional structure. And and also you can uh, you can use strategic business unit. We have a strategic business unit. Uh, you can use only divisional 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 organization. So here mixed organization uh, system means divisional organization. And divisional organization is what when organizations become so big, then they have a head office. Then they have division in Rashahi, division in Chittagong, division in Dhaka. So they what they do, uh, they divide a large organization into smaller, more flexible units. So mixed organizational style is a divisional style where you are creating so many divisions. Why you are developing creating divisions? because you want to divide your large organization into smaller, more flexible units. And obviously, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the hybridization of the mixed form leads to flexibility. Uh, but it's, a, it's really, uh, it's okay, it's an advantage, but it's a disadvantage as well. Sometimes it creates complexity as well. And even competition, competition among a division A, division B, and division C. So artificial competition. So it may hamper productivity. The firm is able to meet special problems by appropriate adaptation of its organizational structure. Remember the word is appropriate adaptation where it is necessary. So if it's not appropriate, then it will create again problem. There will have complexity and there will have artificial competition within the organization. And what are the disadvantages? These, these similar groupings within the same accountability center tend to encourage overlap, duplication, friction because of incompatibility of interest. So when it is a mixed time, Divisional organization, use organization when divided into different divisions. So it may happen. 
suppose in production uh old people are not from production uh, 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 field of knowledge some of them are from different field uh, it may happen uh, it, it, it it sometimes it will happen obviously because when you are uh, just um, mobilizing your resources that overlapping duplication is common so you have to overcome these kind of disadvantage and condition is still exist that result in conflict between functional and project managers so here also it may happen because when there is a division a so division b division c and there is a parent company as well so parent company divided their activities into division a division b division c and division a has again functional structure production sales finance uh, uh it uh, marketing and dot dot similar are here so condition is still exists that result in conflict between functional and project managers you can't avoid the functional uh, organization here you need to uh, apply you need to follow the functional structure as well and within the division that is enough for today the uh, the partially we have covered a uh, project organization uh, the rest we will cover uh, in our next class